Hello, and welcome back to the Rock Code Academy. I'm your host, David Flanagan, although you may know me from across the internet as Rock Code. Today, we are taking a look at two brand new tools for building secure container images. That is APKO and Melange. Joining us today from Chainguard, who I'm going to introduce us to these tools, show us how to get started and uh, explain to me why they're interesting, because I'm not very smart. <laughs> is Ariadne. Bum, ba, ba, Hello, how are you? Hey. Hi, hey, everybody. <laughs> no, on you go. Please feel free to introduce yourself. Um, I'm Ariadne. Uh, I'm the security chair for the Alpine Linux distribution, and I'm also a software engineer at ChainGuard, and basically I'm the author, uh, primary author of APKO and Melange. So, yeah, that's basically it. Awesome. Thank you very much. I mean, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. I mean, you've kept me hanging for months, if not years, but I'm so glad that you've yeah. <laughs> been able to come on and, and share some of that knowledge with us today. So for, you know, for me and for anyone else who isn't familiar or aware of what APKO and Melange are, can you give us like the the high level overview before we, you know, jump to the screen share and, and try to understand what these things are? Yeah, so APKO is a um, image composition tool. It kind of acts like Docker in terms of you have a configuration file that defines a bunch of things, and then it spits out an image and publishes it somewhere. Um, and then the key thing about APKO is that instead of having like things like the run statement or copy statement or whatever, it only assembles images from APK packages. The reason why this is a big deal is because if you try to scan an image made with Docker, um, generally speaking, the scanners can't really see all of the different things that have been put into the image. Like it can only see like what's been added to the image through various package managers like APK or NPM or PyPy or whatever. So the idea behind APKO is that if you have an assembly tool that only deals with packages, then you can guarantee that the scanners can scan everything that's in the image because it's all in the image and it's all recorded in the package manager database. So that, that's a PKO in a nutshell. But the other key thing about Docker is that you can use it to build things in sort of a cloud native way. Um, but as previously mentioned, if you build things with Docker, then the scanners can't necessarily see them. So yep. You need, you need a second tool to take code and turn it into an artifact that can be processed by APKO. And then when you combine these two tools together, um, you get something that can actually be scanned 100% by like Trivi or Snyke or uh, ink or whatever scan tool you want to use. Um, it, it, the key thing is that they have the visibility. So that, we, that's basically what the tools do. I love that you said 100% and didn't play it safe with like 99.9 .9 or something like that. Like it's just, it's just, it's got to make sure that trivia and all of that work well with us, which is really cool. So I'm going to try and just make sure I understood that correctly is that the combination of APKO and Melange mean that in my repository where I'm building my super million dollar application is that we can use these two tools to turn that code into an APK package, which can then be turned into a container image and published. And it gets around this weird problem that I think we've all hit at some point is that when we just copy random binaries into a container image, all these scanning things fall over. Not fall over, but they have no idea what it is because they don't actually do binary introspection or anything like that. They they, they need to know where it came from and the metadata about versions, etc. So 
these two pieces exactly. of software, these two pieces of software together give us that traceability, visibility into this, making sure that our container images can be scanned with these tools, which is a really big deal. Like this is really important yeah. step for understanding the security footprint of our applications when we are shipping them to production. Right, exactly, and that's that. That's the point. Um, is making sure that the final stage in your image composition process is putting out something that is 100% visible to um, the scan tools. And the other nice thing about this is since you have all of that visibility up front, you can actually, at that time, build what's called an SBOM, which is a software build materials file. And if you have that up front, then you don't have to worry about whether or not a scanner is able to put it back together after the fact. So you can be confident in the results of your scan tools and the results of your SCA tools and so on. Because if you're doing everything <clears throat> after the fact, then you're missing things, basically. And... The other nice benefit to all of this is Alpine images are already really small, but since we have these tools now, you can actually build containers that have only the components of Alpine that you require to support your application. Um, and so for an example, we built an Nginx ingress controller uh, container for Kubernetes uh, just as a proof of concept, and it weighs in at 8.3 megabytes instead of the 34 megabyte Nginx Alpine image or the, like, I think it's 140 megabyte Nginx Docker images. And um, just kind of looking into chat here, uh, I noticed that somebody mentioned Chimera, and Chimera should already be um fully supported by apko and melange if you want to use that as your base instead of alpine nice so i mean alpine images were already small enough and being widely adopted because of their size and you went nah not small enough and now we're stripping even more stuff out of that base. that's that's pretty wild but i like it so yeah the um the, the smallest proof of concept image that I made with a prototype of this tool last year, I built a simple Hello World application that just contained Musil, Libc, and, and the Hello World application. And that clocked in at around 400 kilobytes. So this tool enables extremely small images, like much smaller than the Alpine base image. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, I mean, <laughs> I guess what I, so <laughs> you're just 400K, right? So does that include a shell or are we to move in the shell? When we talk about this, uh, that removes the shell, and okay. that's kind of a security feature because if you don't have a shell in there, then you know, like, say that you have like a WordPress container, um, and then somebody gets like R57 shell P not PHP installed on it, they can't then take that R57 shell and then get that to get an actual shell and then root your container or whatever. Um, you know, if there's no shell there, then it's already more secure just from not having that attack surface. Yeah, but th there are better approaches now for when you do need to be able to, you know, do the debug yeah. stuff in production. You know, we have Cube Control debug, which can add a new container, yep. web tooling into your pod. Like, there is there's really no reason anymore for shipping a shell inside of our application. So, exactly. Awesome. Well, I'm really excited to play with this now. So I am going to pop over to the screen share. Uh, and all I have here is a Alpine Linux 3.15 or 3.15, I'm not sure, 
uh, virtual machine running on Linode. I haven't done anything else. Now, I know we've got a little bit of setup to run through, um, but we're, we're starting from scratch, which is where you, the audience, would also be starting from. So we're going to show you every step of the way how to, to start playing with these two tools together. Cool. Um, all right. So um, I'm first, we're going to have to update to Alpine Edge because some of the tools that we need are only available in Alpine Edge right now. So um, if you pull up the repositories file and then you replace the V3.15 with Edge for both of those repos, and then we'll have to add the testing repo as well. All right. Pretty and good. then, yep. And then um, if you do APK upgrade dash capital U and then A and hit enter, it'll upgrade the distribution to edge, which will take like two seconds. Well, maybe a little yeah, longer on it. It's moving fast. I wish most upgrades were this fast. Well, that's that's one of the reasons why people enjoy using Alpine is because the package manager is quite speedy. Yeah, definitely. Um, we want to tackle a question did, just now. Are you happy with that? Like, uh... yeah. Um, I saw that Sam asked in the uh, chat about uh, comparison to DistroList. And actually, the APKO and Melange stack are intended to kind of be a spiritual successor to DistroList. Um, and don't worry, we're working on a glibc version of it uh, to support people who need glibc compatibility. So um i'm just going to give up trying to fix my i don't know why my comments are so <laughs> huge and just taking over the whole thing yeah um so basically <laughs> it's the same uh concept conceptually and it's sort of meant to be a spiritual successor of course google's distroist project uses basil to build all of the base images and it's really a pain to uh, deal with Basil because um, it's just it it's Basil is very uh, verbose in terms of like how you actually use it to build uh, the legacy distroless images. Um, like you have to literally spell out each detail. Like go download this uh, .dev file with this checksum, and then this one, and this one, and this one. And you have to actually solve all the dependencies yourself by hand. So APKO and Melange, uh, it's built on APK and it uses the APK solver and all of that. So it makes everything a lot simpler in terms of uh, actually like going from zero to having an image versus with Distroless where you're having to write like three to 400 lines of basil uh starlark configuration i believe uh i believe the configuration language of basil is called starlark so you have to write like three to 400 lines of starlark in order to actually like add new things to um distroless and it's uh, so we decided you know let's kind of rework that to um, simplify it. And so that's how APK, uh, APKO and Melange came up, came about. Nice. Yeah, I think Basil is a really phenomenal piece of software, but I just can't use it. I find it too difficult, Same. too cumbersome. I'm not a fan of Starlark, this weird Python dialect. Um, I don't want the JVM on my machines most of the time. So I just, it's, it's not a tool that I feel comfortable going to, even though I yeah. appreciate 
what it does and why like you know companies like google use it um yeah so it's nice that there's there are more alternatives more alternatives to that coming up uh yeah. we got pj saying still faster why am i i give up the comments on this thing <laughs> uh still faster than apt yep we've got nuno following along in wsl2 i'll move it one more time but it, it just stay right uh and then we got a question from john john son jr <laughs> Uh, any thoughts on how this was compared to Nixity? I think that's the, the question. Are you familiar with Nixity? Um, I have some passing familiarity. Uh, so if I'm right, I think Nixity is the thing that builds images on demand with Nix. Yeah. Okay, great. Um yeah uh we're considering doing something similar there's a service called contain.me which builds a whole bunch of images on demand and uh one thing that we're thinking about doing is contributing like an apk o version of that so that you can actually build um apk o images on demand through contain.me um the apko internals themselves are designed to allow um one to completely programmatically drive like the apko um image composition image or image composition engine so building something like that would not be that hard to do and it is something that is on a roadmap for apko all right uh, sam says thank you as well for that very detailed answer yeah definitely okay uh so slight segue there but we have our apk upgrade finished like a year ago so we're, we're, we're good we can move on now um what are the the next steps all right so we're gonna have to install some packages um so we're gonna need go obviously the tools are built in go uh build base uh which is build dash base we're gonna need git to download the source code obviously um and then we're going to need bubble wrap which is a lightweight container thing and then um we're gonna need prout uh which is p-r-o-o-t yeah i've not heard of bubble wrap uh uh, bubble wrap is from Red Hat. It's the container um, engine that's used by Flatpak. All right, there we go. I'm learning lots of stuff today. So that's great. Uh, oh, we never got Go one dot eighteen, so we can't use genetics yet. Uh, maybe next week. Well, the, <laughs> the good news is that um, APKO does not target Go one dot eighteen yet, so. I mean, that only dropped yesterday, right? I think. So. Yeah. I see a lot of buzz around it on Twitter. People seem to be very, very excited about being able to use generic. Yeah, it's going to simplify quite a bit of both APKO and Melange to be able to use it, I think. Pulumi too. Um, yeah. You know, we, uh, we have to wrap all of our primitive types and Pulumi primitive type wrappers so that uh, because of the lack of genetics, so that would be a, a nice change for Pulumi in the future. And uh, Jason's yeah. saying Dwight Pruitt. I'm assuming that's an office joke. <laughs> um, I, I guess. <laughs> all right. We, um, got, we got all those packages. All right. So, I mean, technically, we don't need Pruit. Pruit's only if you want to do things rootless. But since we're keeping things simple, let's just not bother with doing things rootless today. I, I, I've got root um, anyway, so we'll just say. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> um, so the next step is to, um, well, which one do you want to play with first? Because there's kind of APKO is pretty useful on its own without having to uh, deal with Melange. So maybe it might be good to go with APKO first and then go through Melange and then show how yeah. they're combined at the end. So, I mean, based on my, my understanding so far, 
which APKO means we could right now declaratively build a container image by just point or just using some Alpine packages, right? Yeah. So if we just wanted to build an Nginx container image, we could we could do that now? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Let's see it in action. That sounds great. All right. So the next step then is going to be to download the APKO source code, which is um, at uh, chainguard dev slash APKO. Uh, chainguard dash dev. Oh, yep. All right. And then you can go in there and you can type in make APKO and then hit enter and it'll make it. And then it's going to download a whole bunch of stuff here. Yeah, we got a it's... comment from Nuno saying, not sure if this was intentional, but melange equals mix in French and melanger is to mix. So. Um. Yes, that, that was intentional. <laughs> um, the idea is that you can mix the artifacts into an image and then everything's scannable. So that that's nice. why I called it that. Yeah, well, we're just waiting on some Go dependencies right now, which won't be long. It'll... It'll be about uh, 30 years because it's building Docker right now. Oh. Well, parts <laughs> of Docker. Uh, is it using BuildKit? Is it using other parts of Docker? I'm not even sure if I can name other parts of Docker now. Yeah. Uh, only the parts of Docker that are related to uploading images. Like um, we use Go Container Registry to actually compose the images and upload them. But that depends on Docker a little bit to do some of the stuff. So those are the parts of Docker that it builds. Nice. Well, I'm glad that uh, when I spun up the Linode machine, I didn't cheap out and go for the smallest one. I did get like the four cores and eight gigs of RAM, I think. So that, that hopefully that helped speed that up. <laughs> yeah, my, my usual development environment is these days is a 32 gig RAM Linode with 16 cores and nice. APKO goes really fast on that. So it, it should go reasonably fast on this. Well, it has built, I'm assuming. Yeah, we yes. got our APKO thing here and we have some sub, sub commands. Yeah, so um, if we, let's see. So if we look at uh, examples slash nginx dot yaml, huh. um, I mean, I just said can... nginx randomly. I didn't know it was just going to be sat there in the examples the directory waiting on it. So that's turned up. It is. I like that. Yeah. So right. this is what we used to build an nginx based um, uh, ingress controller as a proof of concept for Kubernetes, the one that I mentioned that was uh, eight megs earlier. Mm -hmm. um, this is it. So we can actually build that and import it into a local Docker instance if you want to set up Docker. Um, we'll do that in a second. Now, the interesting thing here is the service bundle entry point type, which is a new innovation for APKO versus like Docker or something like that. Um, a lot of people, they'll build like a container that contains like two or three tightly coupled services together and they'll all be in the same container. And so what this does is it will automatically ensure that S6 um, gets installed and it configures it and it sets up the entry point where it just launches S6. So if you like build and run this image, it will run Nginx under a supervisor um, with S6 running as PID1. And 
So it makes all of that a lot simpler than um, like dealing with S6 overlay or something like that. It's just a nice, simple declarative configuration for the services that you want to supervise with S6. Okay. Um, does Docker not have something similar where you do dash in it and it runs everything under tiny or is this different from that? Uh, it does have the ability to run things under tiny, um, but this is an actual like process supervisor, which ensures that like if Nginx were to crash or whatever, it would automatically restart it. So. All right. Okay. Okay. Got gotcha. you. Plus, you could have multiple services as well with the S6 approach, exactly. which you can't do with the container image. Not that people should go crazy and throw lots of different services into container images, but you know there are use cases here, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm just going to assume that this might work. Um, close. Close. Uh, I was I was um, just making it up, but. Uh, well, we have to go back into the other directory. Or that'll work. Yeah. So it's apko build and then the config.yaml file that you want to run. And then we can just call that like apko dash nginx colon latest or whatever you want to call it. And then like apko nginx.tar because that's the thing that you can import into Docker if you don't want to like publish or whatever. And um, if you hit enter, it will build the image for the local architecture and it's done. <laughs> That's it. That was fast. <laughs> yeah. And now if you um, APK add Docker, and then start the Docker service. Yeah, service Docker start. Um, um, if you do Docker, um, load, yes, import, I think, load, right? I can never remember yeah, load, if it's import or load, but. <laughs> and then you do um, the less than sign and then, uh, yeah, APK Nginx Atar. Hmm. The Docker daemon is not running. Why is it not running? Oh. Um. It's okay now. I, I think it was just there. Uh... Oh, no. <laughs> Hmm. It's uh check the var log docker log. It might be something related to C groups. Oh. Uh we're gonna have to hmm. Hmm. Uh, okay, go to etc apk repositories. Um, open that up in in your editor choice. Uh, we need to bring back our five point uh, three point fifteen kernel. Um, so if you do three point fifteen and then you put a tag at the front of it, so a um, at the front of that line, if you put at 3.15 and then space. Like that? Uh, at the front at the front of it. Oh, all right. Okay. And then save it. APK update. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then APK add Linux dash vert at 3.15. And then restart Docker. Uh oh. Are you going to say reboot? Yeah, we might have. <laughs> we 
We might have to reboot it because it looks like there was a kernel update in uh, since uh, Linode uh, built their um, Alpine image. So uh, we're going to have to reboot it, I think, in order to get the necessary modules for Docker to actually start up. Okay. Some real well, this is a, a VM. So... It, it may be quick. It usually... <laughs> Comment. We should have just added Podman. I, I think that may have had the same issue. But, uh, maybe not. Uh, let's see. Did we go? Oh, we got a few more questions there. So Nuno's looking for a hoodie. <laughs> uh, I'll maybe run some swag giveaways soon, mate. Uh, Nuno also said Crane from Go Containers is definitely one gem that not many people know about. Um, I guess that would be as an uh, alternative to using Docker's container registry package. Is that what Nuno's suggesting there? Um, I'm not sure. Well, Crane. Crane uses the um, same Docker components that APKO uses because right. APKO uses Go Container Registry underneath, just like Crane does. Okay, there we go. Uh, so I am a bit late. W welcome. And uh, that was fast is a good tagline for APKO. <laughs> yeah, feel free to quote me. Stick that on the website if you want. And uh, yeah, fucking IP tables. It's always IP tables. <laughs> yeah, fucking networking. It's always hard, isn't it? Uh, we've got uh, Divya. Hey there. That's, Welcome. It, it's it's because I forgot that there was a security update for the kernel because of the dirty pipe thing. So, well, no, had no, I remembered that, uh... <laughs> he's bragging that he didn't have to reboot with WSL two. So you know, I'm glad you're still following along. I'm assuming. <laughs> That should be available now. Uh, yeah, assuming that the automatic reboot thing rebooted it. <laughs> I so wonder if we've lost our machine. Let's, let's see. I can pull up the yeah, like, Linode. Sometimes Linode, um, it doesn't re reboot. It just like shuts it down. Okay, I will reboot it from the U. Oh, it's, it's, I tried to reboot it from the console and it told me that the, the node is busy. Yeah, I think it's already trying to reboot it right. itself. Let's just set up a, some monitoring. This is how I do my monitoring for servers. I mean, that's how everybody does the monitoring. <laughs> yeah, just uh, scrape that with Prometheus, call it done. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Finally, it's done rebooting. So, All right, we'll just wait for SSH to start, which will just be a moment. And I'll grab the password. Yeah. yeah. All right, so if we um, start Docker now, it should work. Yeah, that's a happy there Docker. We go. Okay, as right. if nothing so ever happened. So if we go happened. back into the APKO and slash examples, we should have that APKO, APKO nginx.tar, and then we can load it in. And... Um, if you do docker uh, run apko nginx clone latest, it should start the nginx thing up. Should I detach it or just keep it front and center? Um, you can just go ahead and detach it if you want. And then if you do docker ps, so, and then if you do like PS tree or whatever, it'll show that it's all running under S6. Uh, like, 
You mean just on the host? Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, I thought EF would give me the tree. How would you uh, get the tree? <laughs> PS tree. Uh, really? Uh, it's just one word. Oh. How have I not seen that command before? Yeah. Is that an Alpine thing? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh. Yeah. Well, we're not, not quite seeing what I think we wanted to see. Is that right? Or are we? Um. Hmm. Should all still be? It should still be. It should be running. Yeah, it looks. It appears to be running. Oh, there you go. All right, so <laughs> uh, we do have that engine. That particular, right? um, that particular example container might be, uh, might not be correctly running anymore because it's kind of an older proof of concept, and we changed a few things. So, uh, but but as you can see, it has s6 running in it and mm -hmm. there's nginx inside it and yeah. um yeah so all right we got a comment um, saying forest is that really a thing you can pass to ps no uh probably on some of them yeah okay like if you <laughs> did apk add util dash linux it would probably work Ah, I'm 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 not I'm not that bothered. It's okay. So let's yeah. recap that because this was interesting. We have about a dozen lines of YAML, probably less. We've got kind of two main components. First one is called contents, which will allow us to specify Alpine repositories and Alpine packages that we want to get into a container image. So that's pretty yep. nifty. We then got the ability to do an, an entry point. Now this is something new that you're bringing to the table here called service bundle, which will give us a supervisor inside of our container. And we can specify the services of that we want to start. Now, yep. just in the name of, oh, why does Vim do that sometimes? <laughs> and, and the name of completeness, I, I would be really curious about whether, what does, <laughs> fluffing my words because Vim is fluffing my text. Um, what would a standard entry point look like here? Like, just bin followed by a path or can i can i still do this uh you can do entry point and then command colon and then whatever command you want to run so i could just do so like, i know that path isn't correct but but that would that would just work yeah as normal. Okay. exactly and would that also take a list of args if they were required um or would it all just be blah 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 it, it would all be like that yeah okay I like that. That's that's nice. But that has that that precondition that we need to have our applications bundled as APKs, which is what you're going to show as the magic melange for now, right? Yes. So unless there was something else you wanted to show with uh, APK first, and I I, I don't want to take it. No, I there. mean. No, I mean, that's basically it. Um, APKO is just the assembly tool. And so now now we get to see where we can actually like start building our own stuff to put into an APKO image. And so um, as a proof of concept, uh, we have uh, the GNU Hello World program that we're going to run in a container. And, um, okay, so I guess I have to make Milan by typing. Wow, absolutely wow. Well. Uh, we have to build it first, and then we're, are we working through one of the example directories? Um, yeah, so. Melange is a pipeline oriented builder. Like if you're familiar with um, 
GitHub actions or something like that, then this should all be fairly familiar to you. So if we pull up like a, the GNU Hello World example, so that's an example slash GNU Hello.yaml. Um, there's just two ma uh, three major um, components here. Um, first is the package metadata that gets uh, collected into um, the APK uh, package metadata section. And that includes like, you know, the package name, version, what it does, and then like the copyright data and all of that. And then the second section here is the environment section, and that's literally just a description of an APKO image that you want to build in order to build um, the package. So, so like, a base, like a base image? Yeah, you define your base image for the build environment. Okay, cool. And then you have the pipeline, and that's literally just like a GitHub action style pipeline. You can see that there's a bunch of steps that use pre-baked um, tasks and we have inputs for those tasks like fetching and then this is what the SHA-256 is supposed to be and then we want to configure, make, and make install it and it's autoconf based and all of that. Um, and then we have the sub packages section and that lets you run steps in order to like split things out into sub packages. Like if you want to have the man pages and a doc package instead of having it in the main package that allows you to slim down your um, packages a little bit, which in turn allows you to slim down your images. Um, and then okay. each sub package has its own pipeline and metadata and so on. So, so where do these use these functions or targets come from? Uh, those are bundled in the pipelines directory. So if you get out of that and we go back to the pipelines directory, You can right. kind of see like the fetch.yaml one. And okay. so there's so, a base one, a primitive pipeline called run, which will run arbitrary commands or scripts. Exactly. And we replace the expressions um, based on our inputs. And then that gets templated into a shell script. And then it runs the, the, fragment there in a shell and it's it's basically what you see on the screen there um so what that does is it fetches the thing and then it does the SHA-256 comparison and then it extracts it and if any of these steps in this uh run fragment fail the pipeline fails automatically. So, and then the failures bubble up and all of that. So, cool. Why the double braces instead of just like, you know? Uh, we didn't want to conflict with normal shell scripting variable substitution. So, we have our own syntax for doing variable substitution in the actual like configuration files so that there's no conflict uh, conflicts between um, the shell and all of that. Cool. So. All right, I'm gonna look at one more just cause I'm curious. I'm assuming they're all Yeah. Much the same. Cool. Is there any other primitives beyond runs or is, are all the other pipelines con constructed from a run statement? Uh, it's just constructed from a run statement. Okay, cool. So 
if we go back to our examples, I'm assuming that we can run Melange Help and it looks very similar to what we got with APKO. Yeah. Except for we have some keygen stuff too. I don't think I noticed that on APKO. Well, because APKO is just a um, image composition tool. But to like interact with the packaging system, then you need to be able to like sign packages and sign indexes and so on. So, um, our first step, uh, I would go back to the main directory. Mm -hmm. Our first step is we need to generate uh, a key pair to like sign all of our things with. So, if you do melange um, keygen. It'll actually generate the key pair that we're going to use. And if you look, you can see that there's now a melange.rsa and a melange.rsa.pub. Um, those are just standard X509 key pairs, and there's nothing really that special about them. Um, now we can actually build something. So if you do melange um, build uh, examples slash gnu hello dot yaml and then dash dash workspace dir equals like work or something and then do dash <laughs> Uh, and then do dash dash signing key equals melange.rsa. It's signing dash key. Oh, right. Yep. There's the RSA. And then hit enter. It should build GNU hello and sign it. Oh. Oh. Oh, right. I need to move um, Melange to user share. We have to do uh, make install. That That's the part we were missing. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. So now it should work. Bad substitution. Hmm. Bad substitution. Uh, that's weird. Um, go to um, go. Well, we can fix that real quick. Go to uh, open nano or open the user share melange pipelines autoconf configure dot yaml. Um, apparently the part that doesn't delete the inputs.ops uh, thing is not working correctly for some reason. So if we just delete that, it should work fine. Kind of. That was working earlier today, but. Oh, right. We had to delete the workspace to reset everything. So why are we working for something? Delete that. Yeah. Right. If we run it again, now it should work. Um, and here it's doing the APKO step. Nice. And there, there we go. go. Now it's working. This is awesome. It, sh it should be noted that Melange is not released yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, thank you for coming on to show us it. Um, it's, it's, it's going yeah. very well. Uh, we have an APK. So, so you now have uh, some signed APKs. And if we create a repository, like if you do, if you copy the melange.rsa.pub to ETC APK keys. And then you do apk add and then the hello.apk. 
it should install it. And then if you do hello, you will get the GNU Hello World program, which they managed to make a Hello World program that compiles to a 500 kilobyte package. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have an APK here. Now, the next step would be, I guess, to make a container that has that Hello World package in it, which should answer Amin's uh, question. He was, they were asking about uh, circular dependency. And the answer is no, there's no circular dependency because um, Melange only depends on the APKO uh, Go package. It doesn't depend on the APKO like command itself. So they're otherwise completely independent tools of each other. Uh -huh. um, so if we go and make a directory somewhere, um, doesn't really matter where. And then we make a apko.yaml file. Um, Was it packages? It's contents. Damn. Right. <laughs> and then we do repositories, colon, and then we do like HTTP, you know, the usual Alpine one. DLCDN dot alpine yeah, linux dot org. Copy it. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that works. And then do we need if we replace either of these. The uh, we do need to keep uh, alpine base layout. And if we do hello, and then if we go up to the first one to the repository section, we'll make a local we'll make a local repo. Mm -hmm. um, and we can have that like in slash home slash or like wherever you're gonna put it. Root slash repo. Sure, that works. Um, you don't actually have to use the file colon slash slash. I would just recommend having it as slash root slash repository. Yeah, okay. Um, and then we can just do like entry point user bin hello. Like the command. Oh. It, it still needs to be defined. <laughs> I thought you were showing command. me some fancy uh, shorthand there. User bin. Not yet, but soon. <laughs> like so. Yeah and then save it. All right, so the next thing we have to do is actually set up a repository. So make dir repository, and then go in there, and then make dir x86-64. And then go in there. If we copy the uh, APKs from the Melange directory. Okay, now if we do APK index dash dash output uh, APK index dot tar dot it has to be capitalized, sorry. Oh, yeah, like uh, AP. Yeah, dot tar dot gz. Um, space start, uh, space start at APK. And then hit enter. Um, okay. Now we have to sign that, um, which we're going to use Melange to sign it. So if you do Melange, sign dash index, and then dash dash signing key equals root melange.melange.rsa.pub. 
or .rsa rather. And then apkindex.tar.gz, it'll sign it. Okay, now we have a signed index. Um, if you go back to the directory with our apko.yaml file. Uh, yep. Um, we can now do, we can now run that apko.yaml using the apko build command. I don't think we make installed that. So I'm going to have to do apko, apko build. Yeah, we didn't. And then it was and just then the APK, file but, name. Yeah, and then hello colon latest, and then hello dot tar or something. Oh, do I need to add my rep No. Oh, right. Right, 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 right. Um, you have to do uh, go, go up and bring that. Or no, 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 no. Uh, go back to the new DIR. Uh, bring that APKO command back up. Because we have to actually add the... Yep. Yeah, that one. Um, we have to actually add the uh, key to the trusted key ring. So it's APKO build dash K. Is that for insecure? No, uh, that's the add of the key. All right. So I dash K just... and then the etc apk dot or etc apk melange dot rsa dot pub. Yeah, that. And it should work. There we go. All right. So we now have a hello dot tar with the hello world package in it. And if you do Docker load, and if you execute it, it should say hello world in theory. Ta -da. Nice. And that is a one megabyte container. Yeah, that's pretty trim. <laughs> so that's cool. That's APK. That's APKO Melange and then AP, how APKO and Melange are used together. Very, and very cool. Obviously, like in a enterprise, like so called secure software factory, um, you would have like actual repository management instead of like using a local repo ideally but uh setting all of that up it would not be fun for like yeah. a single episode <laughs> of rock road academy so um i feel a bit silly for asking you from alpine security working for chain guard but an apq and melange and s bombs and all this stuff if dash k was the same as carl's and secure <laughs> um, so uh, I'll edit that out for sure. Uh, but that's really cool. I love that we can have this workflow where we build APKs, we build images, uh, and we get the sign and certification all the way along. And we have a question about the about the S bomb, so I'll get to that in just a second. Um, but this yeah. is just a really cool workflow. I'm assuming that you know, given a bit more time, there will be GitHub Actions and are just going to make this really, really easy for people to get started. Is that the plan? So, yes. So for APKO, we already have GitHub actions. Like if you go to the DistroList organization on GitHub, um, you can see that we're actually rebuilding the Alpine base image based on whatever is an Alpine edge every night. And that's fully done with GitHub actions and the way that we've set this up is people should be able to go and reuse these actions um, without any problem. We have a template repo up, for example. 
that um, has everything that you need. And cool. um, that's a good starting point. Um, thanks, obviously, to Puerco at Chainguard for doing the legwork on the template repo. But if you use that template repo, you can have automatically refreshed images every night. Um, and it'll go and it'll sign them with cosine and like every single part of the pipeline will be like ideal for the supply chain security aspect of it because you'll have images that can be scanned and then they'll be always up to date and it'll be um uh yeah it, it'll be always up to date and it'll be scannable and as you can see here it's not that complicated to do yeah it feels to me like I haven't walked through this with you now um there's only one part that i think can't really be ephemeral and that would be the key gen step right that would be something that we did we do once and we store it as a github action secret or in some other secure place like like vault or something right and then that would be a pair yeah key. You, you would use something like vault ideally like if you were going to use melange to like have automatically built apk repository for the public to use you would use something like vault and integrations for managing apk signing material if vault already exists yeah. um so and the other yeah, thing you, there would be the the apk repository that we created i mean that could be ephemeral that doesn't need to be maintained or long-lived it could that can only exist during the the icd process is that is that fair correct right, okay. correct but i mean if you want it to be permanent there's stuff like jfrog artifactory and stuff like that that already supports managing apk repositories so there's okay. there's no shortage of options out there for all of that and obviously we we would like to hear people's opinions on what's already out on the market for managing apk repositories in a corporate setting because yeah. i have opinions on it but <laughs> Okay, let's uh, tackle a few more questions that we've got today. Uh, so we got one here from GICAD1. Do things that are fetched or added using pipeline stages like this get added or are they represented in the bill of materials? Not yet. Um, right now, the Alpine ecosystem is still using APK version 2 which does not really support capturing all of that data yet um but apk version 3 does and once everything switches over to apk version 3 ecosystem uh all of that will be in the s bomb for free that that's our intention anyway Uh, ta you got I agree. Oh no, my comments are just coming in the middle again. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, creating a local repo in no time and just out of memory. Yeah, I was impressed by that too. The fact that you were just pulling these, plucking these commands out of your head. And I guess you did this DNT out, right? This is. Well, I mean, it, it does help when you like made a lot of this stuff. <laughs> uh, we got a wave. Uh, and uh, yep, converted all images to Melange and APK. Yeah, I'm going to be right behind you there. Uh, this is a really impressive tool chain, and it's so early that it's, it's cool to be just seeing how this evolves as well. Uh, yeah, awesome. uh, it especially with Melange, there, there's a lot that's still subject to change. Um, but we're hoping to have like a release out pretty soon um there's a couple of other initiatives that are in the pipeline for uh my team at chain guard to kind of figure out first 
um, like, like I said, we kind of see all of this as a spiritual successor to Google's distro list. So if, if you think about Google's distro list as like distro list one, um, this is like distro list two that we're building basically. Um, and so we're kind of trying to come up with some ways to uh, ease the transition away from distro list one to distro list two. Uh, so at the moment, those are the things that are kind of getting ready to take priority, but uh, the hope is that we'll have a early preview release of launch out later this week. Wow. Um, <laughs> and then APKO 0 0.2, which we walked through using, is also due out this week. So that's kind of the pipeline there. And then we're doing some similar tooling for Debian to kind of support the uh, legacy distroless users as uh, we try to evolve the distroless ecosystem in this direction. Um, cool. And uh, yeah. Is this, you know, it, it's hard to tell with the, with, with the projects are still in this, this kind of discovery phase and rapid evolution, but I, is this something that people can get involved with? Are you looking for contributors to come along and even provide feedback yeah. or write code? Yes, you are. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've already been merging patches from external contributors. Um, I think uh, PJ earlier in the chat, he's one of the external contributors that has contributed code to uh, APKO. Um, and then there's another big contributor that's outside chain guard that's contributed a lot to both APKO and Melange, uh, named Kruskal. Um, and we're trying to like always get more people involved in, in the project. We fully understand at chain guard that we need to do all of our work in a fully open source way. And, so everybody's welcome to participate and awesome. contribute like ideas, bug reports, patches, whatever they want to do. Cool. Uh, we have a, a couple more questions then, and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. But we got one from Maud uh, saying, sorry, I joined late. I'm curious if Melange can be used to sign Docker images. Now, I'm assuming Melange is using cosign to do the sign in bit, or is that wrong? Uh, Melange just uses uh, the APK style RSA signatures to sign packages. Um, to sign like a Docker image, you would use Cosign, which that uses all the SigStore infrastructure. And SigStore is kind of the modern way of doing it. Um, one thing that I will say is that we are kind of looking at a way to integrate in the SIG store full CO style signatures into APK so that you can have the keyless signing yeah. um, instead of having to deal with uh, having like a key and in, in stored in like vault or as a GitHub action secret or whatever. Um, but that's going to take some work on the APK side to do first. So. All right, and Batuhan is asking, would you mind explaining the intent behind the distro list thing? Can we achieve the same thing by building images from scratch base images? Right, so the point behind distro list is that you can take just the components out of a software distribution that you actually need to support an application and have it done automatically. So um, you can do things like build a statically linked binary and then copy it over into a scratch image. But the problem there is that if you do that, like the tooling like Trivi and 
snike and all of those scanners they will not understand what's going on and they won't know how to scan it so by using this distroless technique and capturing everything into packages you can have full transparency to the scanners basically um and that's a powerful thing because right now the scanners miss a lot of details because they can't see the app that you're trying to scan. Yeah, with the static link binary, you, you don't know if you're using a version of OpenSSL, for instance, that has some current CVE, um, which can cause exactly. problems with your application. So that's, that's the problem in the space that these tools are, are trying to solve and why they're so important. All right. Well, yep. we're all out of questions. Is there anything else that you would like to show or share before we wrap up for today? I think that's it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh, and for coming on to kind of walk us through this. I really am really excited by this and I can't wait to start kicking the tires on it. And uh, it's just yep, really cool absolutely. to see tooling in a space that can hopefully pry us away from the, the Docker file and all these other convoluted build tools. So very exciting. Time. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's been good coming on the show and hope to do it again sometime. All right. Well, have a great day. I'll speak to you soon. And thank you again. Have a nice day. All right. Bye.